Superman trying to do the oh, the one that just rips them to shreds. Absolutely mauled by the gore drinker. Definitely looking really strong. They're now just going to mow through the entire Mad Lions lineup. 28 kills to nine, and Misfits take any hope Mad Lions had. So far, the start of the season is a bit of a bad dream for Fnatic. All the roster we had, losing was something unacceptable. But right now, I feel like even if we lose, we always try to find solutions and not to think that it's the end of the world. Self mid, now another one kicking off the mid lane. Gilius running for the hills. Oh, he mistimed it! Oh, he stands still. He knew he mistimed it. Oh, there, there it is. He timed it right this time. Yeah, this time he got it. The atmosphere that uh, brings upset and Niski is something that I missed very much since my uh, Unicorns of Love days. Be careful. It's a DPS check up against that Olaf. I don't know if he wins this one, but it looks like he just might. The double dash out to save. Humanoid leaving four. Looking to get one. That's the double kill coming in for El Yoya and the dragon to follow. I think I am my biggest obstacle, like my mental, if I can get over it. If I train harder th than the others, I'm gonna beat them. To be the best, you for sure need talent and you need to have the motivation to never give up. Left alone without the rest of the team, as Jaws are running in the killer instinct from Kazi! The double kill continues to chase down White Knight. That's the triple! This year is gonna be one of the best chances uh, that I've, uh, I've had to get on top. I had to do it in NA first, but no, I, I want to do it in Europe as well. Cloud9 waited six years and they will hoist the trophy again. When I left back in 2018, I think it was, um, I was a top three mid. Let's keep potentially now in front of the tunnel landing. Oh, Wax is in the middle of the team now, looking to fire back to Tom Kenster to save the day in this game. Oh! oh he's gonna get one! Oh my god! One versus five, and Niski gets two! No, I think I can be on the top with Caps. I think with Fnatic we can be a top team and I will make sure that I'll be a top millionaire as well. Fnatic is definitely weaker because uh, Reckless was such a huge part in their success. I think over time, I think they will be good, but probably not better than before. El Yoya coming in is gonna shake up the question of does Kaiser have to activate the team or can El Yoya put Mad in a situation where they don't have to rely on Kaiser? I mean, there is always a doubt of not doing good, and that's something that obviously I think scares me, kind of scares all players, but yeah, once you you believe yourself and what you're capable of, I think that you can beat anybody. Mad Lion's ace Astralis, Armut with the triple kill. That's the exile rank, spin, 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 and burn no trigger. Oof, amazing video. Welcome back to the LEC, our final match and our match of the week, Fnatic versus Mad Lions. The finger poses like the down and the up and the, whoo, wow. Shox is pumped. I'm pumped. I mean, just the Dang. poses by just missing a T-Po somewhere, but you know, fantastic now, video. Every, and Every time we see Kaiser going at all, the only thing I'm going to see in my head is... No, he doesn't. Oh, is that it? Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what's going down. <laughs> All I ever did I you just think it. he was just pointing down for some reason? <laughs> oh, no, there was it was Euro going down. It's like the you know what? We have these meetings that our producers say, "Listen, we really got to drive the weight down of the matches." <laughs> so when we get into it, immediately get into that big narrative. Nope, we're talking about poses, baby. <laughs> just kidding. This is a very important game, and it is a very weighty match. Both teams are coming off a win yesterday, setting the stage for an exciting game to close out the day. And this is one of those matches where it is, of course, always incredibly important at the beginning of the season or at any point at the season, but especially when you're up against an opponent who you know is going to be one that you likely will face further on in the season in the playoffs and that you want to have a good showing against. When you look back at how close the playoffs race was last summer, even all of last year, I think you have to know, you have to look at the people you expect to be facing off against, and you have to know that every one of those matches is almost worth double because you push them down one, you push yourself up one, the head-to-head -head is also incredibly important. So even though it's early and we don't want to set high expectations, these games are incredibly important for both of these teams. And two teams that want to you know, show something with their new lineups up versus these opponents. The jungle matchup will be crucial. Self-made, we know how good he is, Elioli. 
Elioya is trying to make his mark and has had some fantastic games with Mad so far, being extremely proactive in the early game. Is he going to have to be the difference maker? Yeah, I think that both these junglers really like the early game. I think that there's a difference in the two styles where Elioya is willing to give up himself for the team, play things like the Ivern that we saw, whereas self is always going to pick a carry and he's always going to get himself ahead. You saw it yesterday. He picked Olaf. He took the second blue from Niski when Niski was zooming yeah. lane. self here to carry. He's here. Look at the stats. Second in damage, second in KP. He's going to be in your face and he's going to do so much damage. So I hope that Mad Lions don't give away Olaf to Fnatic for sure, because giving away Olaf yesterday seemed like a, a free lose, basically. Yeah. And you talk about posing, and as much as I love that post from Elio, yeah, Selfmade was the man whose posing you had to be scared of, because he was walking into tower range, tanking tower shots, spamming emotes, and BMing. That was how confident he was. That was how far ahead he was. So while I would love to see a clash of styles, I just don't think there's a world where we ever see Selfmade play Olaf again, if I'm honest. Ah, who knows? And I think both these teams have two different weaknesses, right? We saw it over the last couple of weeks. Fnatic's just, as a team, they join the Inters, right? If someone makes a mistake or goes in, Fnatic just pile in with them and it turns into just an ace and it just snowballs out of control. Whereas Mad Lions make these individual, too aggressive plays, jumping into tier twos, Humanoid going aggressive, getting caught out. So both these teams have two different weaknesses, I think, but I think that the last two games have shown they brought it together quite well. That it has. They also have uh, aggression in almost every lane when it's needed. We've seen from Niski yesterday in terms of Fnatic that he holds the line a lot for this team and uh, doesn't mind sacrificing himself so the team can perform. So we'll see if that is translated into the picks and bans. We'll be covering them right here on the desk. A couple of known faces taken away, namely that team, um, that Twist Faith rather, is not finding himself on either team. Yeah, TF, although it did lose one game today, it's still like 9-1 and one at this point. It's probably the most, the strongest man in the game. I think Olaf and TF are kind of like locked in red side bands at this point just purely because of the win rates and how strong these champions are so i like the bands from fnatic the set ban is a little bit confusing to me as to mad lines why they're banning out set um but they're probably targeting hillisang there who did have quite an aggressive showing on it last week and the Renekton flex, maybe. the flex as well and Renekton ban tells me now camilla and aatrox are like the top tier top laners right now for these two two players and while i think that every single matchup in this in this game is going to be important with the zoe band coming through now as well karzi kaiser versus upsets hillisang is going to be really interesting to me because karzi kaiser yesterday we said it earlier in the day absolute lane domination whereas upset was left alone with Hillisang freed up to roam. Now, both of these supports have been known to play for hard lane domination, and they've been known to abandon their AD carries in roam. And the bot lane matchup is going to decide so much of how this early game plays out for both of these bot lanes. It's yeah. going to let a lot of freedom because no bot laners for now are being banned out too much except for the set, perhaps. So there are possibilities there. Yeah, Lucian Ban tells me Kaisa's one of the most OPs right now. We've seen the Pantheon is open as well. Elioya really likes the Ivan and uh, Lilia as well. So even if he doesn't pick jungle now, I think going to 2-3 is fine. Like like you said, Kars and Kaiser, lots of double kills yesterday, and against Hillisang, they're gonna struggle. Talia is open, the is thing open is, as well. Yeah, as much as I like the idea of looking at the Ivern, it's Talia and Pantheon. And if yep. we don't get a Talia Pantheon jungle matchup, there better be some special Talia ready made counter from self made here. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be upset. I'm gonna be throwing question mark pings because both these champions are so incredibly strong and have looked so very easy to execute. Yeah, definitely agree there. And I think pairing something with the Talia, something, like I said, the Pantheon, really good pick for Fnatic. I think Kai's is also super high on the priority list right now. I think Talia needs solo lanes that she can work with. You know, you can go for double AD solo lanes. We've seen Humanoid run the Tristana. I think something like an Aatrox Tristana could work really well with the Talia, but it does lack the setup. So I think Leona is also a really good pick for Mad Lions. Gets the setup going for the knockups for the CC. Um, Are we expecting more possibilities for cross-map plays outside of the two junglers? That seems to be a trend we've seen in a couple of games today. Um, Gal Galio is the interesting one. Galio is the other one that has been relatively popular when you take, um, you know, these two plus TF out of consideration that I would have my eye on. But I'm curious to see what the actual priority is there for the bot lane matchup because the semi-global can be very strong, but Galio also... When he, when he gets behind, he's just not a champion that I generally want to see. Yeah. There's a few bottling combos here. You got Ophelios Thresh, you got the Senna as well. You got things like the Kalista. We've seen Sire rise to uh, rise to fruition. I think the Rakan paired with that's really good. We saw that with the XL bot lane. Uh, I think the problem is Rakan's just weak blind pick, right? Against melee supports, aftershock supports, even range supports. It struggles in the early game. So blind picking things like the Rakan is kind of not the best thing you want to do. Yeah, and additionally with the Rakan, you wouldn't really have great tools to face check because unlike, you know, the Olafs or the Hecarims of the world where you have this unstoppable alt to get you out to save if you do get caught out, Talia is very vulnerable. She has to push in without vision, and Rakan, while he does have a lot of good engage and some decent escape tools, pretty easy to one-shot, especially early to mid-game. So 
curious to see if we get more hyper engaged supports or if there is a pivot away maybe on the Fnatic side to more ranged supports. I would frankly hate it. I love Hillisang on engage more than anything, but this Aurelia into the Azir is super interesting. This Aurelia pick is slightly confusing to me because I would have paired Pantheon with something like a Syndra on Orianna. I think that just rounds out the mid jungle so much better. Yes, this Aurelia could be a flex, the top lane, but Pantheon Aurelia mid jungle seems like the scaling is not that great, especially against something like the Azir. Yesterday in the interview, Niski did say that he wanted to see the return perhaps of some other champions than the ones that we've been seeing in the control mages. So it could be an indicator, but as you say, the flex is still on the table. And the big thing here is we look at the second bands, Alistair coming out, I expect more support bands will continue to come through as both sides have an AD carry and both are missing a support. But in this matchup, obviously Aurelia, I, ex I expect from Niski's hands to be pretty dominant early to be able to bully the Azir. But if we get into a, f a point in the game where it is a lot about team fights, the changes that happened to Aurelia forever ago, her W no longer reducing magic damage is a big deal here because she has to leap through all the Talia stones to get onto that back line. So if he's not finding a flank in fights or fighting on a side lane, it's going to be very hard to get value out of this Aurelia pick before she just gets destroyed on the way in. Yeah, I think the scaling on Mad Lines with Zaya and Azir is obviously way more favored than uh, Fnatic's Pantheon and the Aurelia. And I think the Aurelia into Azir is a good matchup in terms of you can get an all in going. You could probably kill the Azir if you land a stun level three, level six as well if you have the Ignite. You can definitely get a solo kill in that lane. The problem is if you don't pull off a solo solo kill and the lane is even for the first 10 minutes, I think Azir just kind of wins there's out. There's no way it's for Hilly, right? The Aurelia? The, the Pantheon? The Hilia. Oh, the, 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 Hilia. Hilia. the Pantheon could <laughs> get flexed the bot true, lane. True. Kaisa Pantheon could work. I mean, the E removal on the tower shots for the Pantheon meant so support Pantheon. Just throwing it out there in turn. But like, if it right. pans out, then. Yeah, the flex is still there. There is a lot of supports banned. Even the set is out. You're looking at things like the Leona being the most OP right now, the Nautilus and the Rel. I think those are the top yeah. three supports right now. Uh, Pantheon could be flexed, I think. It would make it slightly better if you can get an AP jungle, but there's no real AP jungle available that has a lot of CC other than the Lilia, really, but it doesn't really pulse, uh, it doesn't really go super well with the Aurelia. And Fnatic taking their time on that pick, it will be the Leona. So they're freeing up last pick for Blippo, which I like, trying to give him a favorable matchup and holding on to that potential flex for as long as possible. And the good thing about Aurelia, even if it's not a split damage profile, is that it is set up or follow up CC for the Pantheon. So kind of tracking to see how that how well that's utilized. And I like how many engage options Fnatic do have on this composition so far. That said, at this moment, Kais is going to need to go into the Nashers if they want more magic damage. There needs to be, I think, a little bit more magic damage to balance this composition out as we now have a Wukong. I honestly didn't think we'd see the champion again after the suite of nerfs he got What's last so year. What's so interesting, because it's both an Armut pocket pick and a champion he loves to play and a Kaiser champion he <laughs> loves to play. And I think the Fnatic have written a bit of a hole right now. They have double AD on the mid jungle and there's a Gragas Malphite ban from the side of Mad Lions, banning out two AP carries. And I'm not sure if Whipper wants to go for something like the Kennen. The Rel does come out, which is Sort was one of the top supports. Now I'm curious to see what Fnatic pull out here. You need an AP top laner, something that scales pretty well because there's not too much late game insurance on Fnatic. They have a lot of CC, they just need a little bit of engage. Orn would work pretty fine, I think, but it wouldn't be the best in terms of magic damage and it wouldn't. It needs something to be with skirmish, something in team fight, something AoE. I think Orin is probably the best pick here for them. Perhaps there's a, for the rest nothing else that Whipple has played. We have a, an Aatrox perhaps. Sorry, what? what? A... It's Panty on top. Oh, oh. it's Panty on top. I love it. Whoa. Okay. I, <laughs> I was trying to figure out what AP top yeah, laner he could play, man. but now the Evelyn coming back for self-made. If you're a Fnatic fan, this is so good to see. You got to see it at Worlds. This man put on a clinic. He Upset looks absolutely shocked. Okay, <laughs> but this plan. draft, yeah. self-made has to carry the game yeah. because the Aurelia yeah. and Pantheon are really volatile lanes and they won't scale super well if they fall slightly behind because Mad Lions is scaling. is really, really good. They're going to outscale Fnatic 100%. So self-made needs to get fed and Fnatic needs to sort of get this game rolling. But I love how they like had the wool over our eyes and then all of a sudden made it all make sense because of locking in the Evelyn at the end. And I guess they're hoping that that also caught um, Mad Lions off guard, but they've got a strong composition themselves. And it's so crazy because coming into yesterday, it looked like the meta didn't change at all in 11-2, but now in this final game, it's completely <laughs> different. There are <laughs> the so many though. picks we have not seen, so many combos we have not seen coming together on both sides. And frankly, I just want to see how it unfolds. Yes, let's see. We're ready for our match of the week. Let's get into the action. No. Welcome to our match of the week is Mad Lions take on Fnatic and exactly like Dracos was saying on the analyst desk, 
So many different looks in this game. So many new champions. And one of the things I have to just call out immediately is this Wukong pick, something that we saw Kaiser play in support last year. He went 3-0, and and we saw Armour playing at Worlds. While it was not the most successful, we have seen him playing it. As soon as I saw that Wukong locked in, I was like, oh, what? Where, who's going to play? Where's yeah. And then obviously, <laughs> Ral gave me that answer. Yeah, I, of course, going into the top lane, it's going to be super exciting to see him back on that, but also self-made on the classic. Evelyn, what's up, guys? How you doing? Hope you're all enjoying the show. Uh, but uh, yeah, self-made. I remember uh, a particular game he played at Worlds last year where he certainly put on the show, flying over the wall, catching out double lift. And this is a champion that he has been so good on for so long one of his pockets. He, he absolutely has. And in terms of uh, LEC performance, three wins, one loss. It is hugely influential. The analyst desk was talking about how Fnatic will need Selfmade to step up and help carry this game. And while we were watching the draft unfold, we were discussing about the mid game and how much there's going to be some priority on Fnatic to make some plays, take advantage of how Evelyn can honestly benefit every single one of these lanes because of just how much CC and set a potential they have. Exactly, right? All of the Fnatic lanes have really high agency. So basically they got like, they've got dashes, they've got CC, they've got all this set up to jump on you from pretty far away and pair up very nicely with an Evelyn. So post level six is when we need to see Fnatic get stuff done because like Kedwell was kind of talking about on the analyst desk is these champions do need to get an advantage in lane, but they're not going to have a ton of support three level six. And that's where uh, Fnatic's lanes are going to have to give some respect over to El Yoya's Talia, of course, on the other side. And even Selfmade is in his early path and is making making sure he secures both of his buffs early on just to make sure there's nothing going on in any sort of invade play. Level two advantage to upset and Hilly, and they're pushing Kazi and Kaiser backwards. First time that I'm seeing the Zaya Rel combo here in the LEC as Armour takes a lot of damage from where Bone starts to back away. And for Fnatic, we've seen a tale of two Fnatics. Their first two games, absolutely crazy. Uh, Blood boss non-stop, and we see some patience from them as Armour will dash forward jump onto Whippo, a lot of minions to work with, and that will force the flash immediately from Whippo. Yeah, that's rough, because I, I do actually really like uh, Pantheon in this matchup early on, but with the big stacking wave and the level three coming across from Armo, you saw that Whippo almost ended up falling down there, but obviously, if it's level three versus level three, Pantheon is gonna definitely have the upper hand there. Regardless though, he has to let the lane push into him, similar to how you see Niski uh, and the lane pushing in, in him there as, uh, as well, because again, your jungler, very likely not going to emerge from the jungle. And a classic trope of self-mates in 2020 was that he would just be farming non-stop. You know, he was just trying to blitz through his jungle, get the highest level in the game, because he was going to be the carry. And as the Evelyn, he is the focal point. Well, self-mate decides he wants to show up already. The Zenith Blade catches out Kazi and very good flash over the wall manages to escape, but that's success. Flash and cleanse down now on yeah. the Zaya. It's a little odd though, cause like, why why use the, the cleanse, right? If you're flashing away from the Zenith Blade, the, the initial uh, cast of the charm isn't gonna do anything. So Kars gonna lose both summoners there in a situation where he did not have to. And uh, just like we saw in the last game, because of Selfmade's early pathing and, and foregoing the Krugs in his first clear, Elioia goes in to take those away. And we actually saw, we didn't mention it, but Armut placed a ward on Krugs at level one. So Elioia knew those were gonna be up and planned accordingly to be able to be there and steal that away. A very good uh, heads up play then from the Mad Lions team as well. And every time we look at that bottom lane, Hillisang just is p positioning himself so far forward. It feels like he really wants to go in as the crash down comes out from Kaiser. They turn their attention and damage onto Kazi. A lot of damage being burned down. Remember, no flash, no cleanse. Upset holds Whoa. onto his flash. Teleport's now coming out as well. Kazi's below 50 HP. A dash forward, and he's not going to get taken out just yet. Big Knight will secure first blood for Hillisang, but Hilly will get dropped down by Humanoid, who TP'd into the fray. Now Kaiser's looking for a follow-up. Niski manages to get the flawless duet. He gets crashed down on once again by Kaiser and the seismic shove. He's dashed away from. Niski gets himself one kill before he's taken down by Humanoid. It's a two for two. It's craziness down in the bottom lane as it trades evenly and what? self -man? He's not farming the menu. He's changed. He's ch this man last year, he farms those entire three waves. He just takes it all. He'd be level six already, but no, he's setting it up, making sure it's going to be in a decent position for when Niski returns to the lane. But a two for two trade overall and dead even, it looks like in terms of gold. Now the question is, is that the right call here from Selfmade? Obviously, Humanoid got the two kills in the bottom lane, and I want to come back to this thought in a moment or two. 
And obviously that uh, crash down mount up combo from Kaiser doing so much work multiple during the course of this fight. Yeah, I mean, Upset and Hillsang playing very aggressively here. And because Karzi didn't have sums, that's why they wanted to make the play. But even the TPs, Humanoid gets his off a second before Niski, which is a little unexpected. Communication, maybe not saying we need you now. But also with the junglers coming back on the map, Oyoya's pathing bot side. Jungler's top, we got another one. We're right back in. This is not a replay. This is another fight. Well, Yoya is here already, and Hellasang is going to be left for dead. The rest of Mad Lions looking to run him down. Selfmade is just about to enter the fray. At least bought a lot of time, and Selfmade decides to back away, in fact, decides not to push into the river. And I just need to chill out a little bit. This, this happened last week, too, where, again, th this comp and El Yoya even steals away the Scuttle Crab, so nicely done by him. Can they actually chase down Selfmade? Because that's a self-slow. It definitely feels to be the case. Selfmade will have some support from Niski, and he manages to escape for now. But five kills in six minutes, and his non-stop action in the bottom Yeah, but, but here's the thing is, like, right, like, uh, Cato on the analyst was saying, Fnatic need to increase the speed of the game, but not for the first five or six minutes, right? Let's get self-made to level six. Let's get in that invisibility so we can start taking over the map and not just playing for the two versus two around the bottom lane. I, I do feel like Fnatic pressing their luck a little bit too much. And now two kills onto an Azir. The other kill is on the Zaya. Mad Lions are very happy with what's happened so far. Mad Lions will have some support. That's a great slide glide. Emperor's Divide into a beautiful stun from Kaiser, and that's just an easy kill. And, and uh, the answer to your question about two minutes ago was where, like, should have self-made have taken the mid wave? No, he shouldn't have because there was no flash on Niski. You, you can't let the lane push forward like that. So as soon as Niski's on the opposite side of the lane, well, you see a gank like that come through from Kaiser. Kaiser very good at spotting those mid lane rotations and gank opportunities. So very nicely done once again, and now we're going to the top lane. We absolutely are. Cyclone into the Nimbus Strike. Ayoya joins the fight as well, and Whippo gets dunked down. He was already struggling a little bit in the lane. The TP's on cooldown. He doesn't have his ultimate available, but there will be some minions lost to the tower as well. Five kills to two, plus 1,400 gold before eight minutes on the clock. We kept hyping this mat, this game up to be a bloodbath, to be action-packed. I didn't think it was going to happen. I thought there'd be some tempered moods. But what, did you watch Fnatic in week one, Trevor? You're out of your mind. Fnatic are just all forward nonstop, and it's it's cursed them. It, I mean, maybe, right? But like, if you look at their wins and their losses across their last four games, first two games were losses. Uh, 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 minus 3K at 15, eight deaths at 15. They're already on five. And then in their wins, it was much more clean. It was much more controlled and calculated. Now, still only a 1,500 gold difference right now, and as they're starting to hit level six, the ability to initiate, to make skirmishes on Fnatic's terms are definitely possible. And if you look at the minimap, Selfmade and Niski are making their way down south. Yeah, so the Windy on Karzi's flash is just about to pop back up. Kaiser still won't have his for about another minute, but now Whippo also level six. As soon as he gets prior on mid, look for these sorts of moves. And again, the 2v2 about to be a 3v3. Kaiser's gonna help out so much. Karzi will get dropped down by this Ignite, starts to tick down, oh! and not taken off! He does not get taken out, I misspoke entirely. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's going to arrive to prevent any further follow-up, and Kazi escapes with his life. Check this out. No, okay. It looked like there was going to be a, a gank attempt from Blippo in the mid lane, too, but it won't end up coming away. I mean, just a great knock up there from Kaiser to stop the last auto attack coming out from Upset that keeps his AD carry alive, and the flash wasn't even used there from Karzi. So the next time a gank happens, he's going to have the flash. He's going to level up to six as well. Now that global just can be used to engage in top, and he sees where Armut is. Gonna jump on him, a lot of damage coming out. The Comet's Pia thrown out as well. Armut 400 HP. That's a solo kill. Down, and Bwipo should be able to finish this off easily. So solo kill to Bwipo after he was ganked <laughs> just a few moments ago. And I just heard from production that Kazi escaped with seven hit points. Seven HP he escaped with That's his six life. more than he needed, Trevor. Well, manages to not give any gold to the bottom lane. Hill is saying an upset playing way forward, like every single opportunity that you're jumping in. Now, of course, with Bupo getting that solo kill, he's going to be just a little bit more accelerated. Yeah, that's going to be good news for him. It's also good because, uh, of course, he lost the global to initiate that play, which was really nice because he used the turret to make sure he still had vision of Armut's Wukong, even though he'd used his clone and, and popped the inv and popped the invis. But Bupo's TP is going to be returning. So both top laners going to have that ready. El Yoya also has the Weaver's Wall, so it's a little bit easier to react to any of these uh, plays coming through from the Evelyn by having a global of yourself. Try and hop on in there, even if you don't have perfect vision. But they We'll be starting up the Herald on top of Vision. Karzi is also rotating towards mid, so Mad Lions are banking on the fact that with a numbers advantage, Fnatic cannot contest them here. Whippo's ultimate's not available for any initiation tools, but Upset and Hilly are in range. The Solar Flare is available. The Herald should go down before 
Fnatic can arrive, not available just yet, and will actually get picked up there. Now Hilly will look for Kazi. He gets caught out, stunned. Flash over the wall by Niski. Defensive flash. Kazi stays alive long enough to get Mad Lions into the fight. Hillisang will be the next target. And a seismic shove throws him backwards along with the Zenith Blade. Now Pupo is going to start slapping down on Alyoya. He gets a kill back. Pupo turns his attention to Humanoid as Niski and Selfmade trying to join. While that's going on, Armut is pushing Armut? the top lane. Like, help your team, dude. You have TP, you have ultimate. Do something. He's just hitting turret plates. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, Fnatic should not be at a numbers, uh, even numbers, right? And Upset's pushing down bot side, but Armut decided to back away from the Rift Herald Salt, hitting the top tower. And sure, he gets a billion gold off of that play for himself, but the rest of his team got hit hard. Now, can Armut get away with his life? Cyclone is available to him. No way you no die here, too. Flash. And Whippo and Selfman are trying to find him in the vision. Teleport coming in from Humanoid as well as Niski. Armut's going to be able to buy some time with that Cyclone and gets away. The Nimbus Strike will be able to deliver him to Niski. Now, Humanoid's already thrown out. The Emperor's Divide and Armut is chunked down. Humanoid Sand Soldiers, not enough to pick up Niski. And Whippo is maybe going to sacrifice himself. The Sand Soldiers get one back. Selfmate steps in forward once more and will die to the tower. That is a two for three in favor of Mad Lions. Two for two, sorry, as Niski did. What am I watching, I have Trevor? no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I, I, I just don't know what to say. Well, let's summarize the game. 15 kills and Fnatic were down nearly 2K gold. Over the last few minutes of play, they've managed to claw that back to six or 700. If you look at the CS differences, Armut currently ahead of Whippo, as well as Humanoid ahead of Niski. On the other hand, though, Upset is farming up a storm. Nearly 40 CS in the lead, and we've hit that point of the game where Fnatic's initiation tools and skirmishing... Okay, Whippo, what are we doing? ...can play into their advantage. Whippo's already got himself one solo kill against Armut. It's Gordrinker versus Gordrinker. And Whippo's just going to wait for the cooldowns and... Not going to be able to have the range there on that Q. So this time, Armut escapes. Yeah, Bupo really liking that 1v1 there, dropping in with the Skyfall. But uh, yeah, I mean, just a very perplexing series of events. And now uh, I, I feel like coming out of a play like this, having so many flashes burnt, this is definitely going to benefit Fnatic, even though overall, I think Mad Lions got a lot of what they wanted. It's six kills now on the Azir. Obviously, we just saw the gold manifested by that, about 1,500 uh, a lead over Niski, who very quickly is trying to get into some magic resistance with a wit's end for himself. But the lack of flashes, self-made having his ultimate ready now. There is a, a big window now for Fnatic, Fnatic to make plays on pretty much anyone not named Humanoid. Because I feel like every time they try to do something against Humanoid, he has just beaten them, and it is not working for them. Yeah, that's what I got. Well, Fnatic's game plan has been very, very clear. Just fight, fight, fight at all costs, uh, no matter what. It reminds me a little bit of their game against Misfits from week one, where it just was non-stop action, whether it was the right call or not. Uh, it's entertaining to watch, and Fnatic are going to push all the vision into the red buff uh, jungle of Mad Lions. And with 30 seconds until Infernal, they managed to pick up the first Drake of the game and maybe want to look to play around this next one in 20 seconds. Yeah, I think they will. Uh, for, for the time being, I feel like Mad Lions, they've got eight seconds, so I don't think they're going to be able to get that final turret playing top lane before it goes down. But that top turret has taken quite the beating with all the time Armut spent on that side of the map. So they take down that turret, and now self-made looks for El Yoya. That's a lot of damage! I mean, just the full combo deletes El Yoya where he stands, and that's kind of a good... Oh, no, he doesn't have flash, though. Cannot get out just yet. Emperor's Divide oh, into a fantastic no. combo. So one for one. No, so I actually like the idea of what Selfmade was trying to do there by hiding in the pit, because there were control wards on both sides, and he didn't know, right? So he thinks without a flash, with people collapsing, he hides inside the pit, but with control wards being up, they expected, wait a second, he actually didn't leave. He's standing in the same place, so he does get punished. Fnatic will get the turn on the bot side of the map, and now it's, it's a race. Junglers need to get back into the map, because there's an Infernal ready to go. Okay, let's take a... Uh, Zoomed out picture now. Uh, with towers starting to fall, with people starting to get caught out as they're moving into their own jungles and, and into the dragon pits, the analyst desk in Kedril in particular was very, very firm on Mad Lion scaling and how he was a little nervous for Fnatic. With Mad Lions being in the lead, albeit minorly, and the fact that Humanoid is yeah, so yeah. fed. Fnatic have to avoid him at all costs. I mean, Mad Lions just check a lot of the right boxes, right? They have strong frontline initiation. They have three very powerful backliners, two with great self heal against all the dive that Fnatic have. So in a straight up 5v5, especially once items get uh, in the hands of Mad Lions, they're going to look super, super good. 
Pesh is just going to hop out to safety. The question is, Fnatic will always have the upper hand in skirmishes, and that's where Bupo is looking for real kick. Bupo has got a lot of damage onto Al Yoya with the go. help of Self Made, is easily able to take him down. A little drop on top of Kazi, who has flash and cleanse available, but there's no further sums followed up. Mad Lions got the dragon. Al Yoya died for the third time. He was the sacrificial. Oh, to they leader. want him. They really want him. Yeah, they really do. Fnatic again signaling their intent. No ultimate from self -made. He may not need it. The Feather Flies from Kazi he stays alive long enough for Kaiser to jump in. And Fnatic are diving in between two turrets. It's just a bit over Did the self -made top. self-made know that he didn't have ultimate? Because that looks like a play you go for when you know you have ult and you can get out to safety, but it wasn't up. Well, that means that self-made goes down to diving on top of Kazi. Armor with the Cyclone will buy so much time. Whippo joins and picks up a kill of his own. Now, oh yeah. Will arrive just in time to hold the minion wave to prevent any further pressure onto this tower. And I'm not quite sure what Mad Lions and Fnatic are thinking with all these plays, but it is just, it is non-stop action. And I think it's a little bit scary for Fnatic when you start thinking how Talia, how Zaya, how the Azir can handle these engages. Exactly, because like a lot of action is, is, to be fair, like that's exactly what Fnatic's comp wants at this period in the game, but it needs to be action that leads to results for Fnatic. Good results, positive, or they're getting gold advantage, they're getting turrets, because uh, a big problem for them is the fact that there's only one turret down uh, in, in the bottom lane. So you see a lot of their plays have been focused around that bot lane, but until we start taking away these other outer turrets, well, there's just areas that self-made can never pass through uh, because of the true vision that the, the turrets do grant. So Fnatic need to be able to convert these kills into towers. They need to just be winning in the kill trades because otherwise Mad Lions, I mean, you can already see they are starting to stack up some items. Yeah, they really are. Selfmade was looking for the engage. Yoya was able to sidestep. I think with Fnatic focusing so much around the bottom, it is important to call out that Upset is still farming up a storm. Yeah. It's been on that uh, uh, Gale Force for a little while and it was just picked up by Kazi. The other thing too is with the, the introduction of the new items for, for Selfmade, in particular on the Sevelin, being able to get a proto belt or a rocket belt. Sorry guys, it's a rocket belt for your first item is really great. Having that extra sense of mobility that isn't just attached to like her E where it's a point and click, being able to close the distance a little bit more, combo that with a blue smite. There are more tools for self-made to get in range to actually apply that charm and get the pick. And that's a, a really nice little buff there for self-made and to this champion. Well, we need to track what Fnatic's vision looks like because if self-made can find himself uh, in positions to kill off members of Mad Lions in the next few minutes, this uh, even gold game can very rapidly swing yeah. in either team's direction. Um, There's just a few interesting builds for now. yoya has gone Hourglass first, played the Rune King, picked up for Niski first as well. Yeah, in particular, that Hourglass for Yoya, I love it. We got to play in the bot side, 2v2, let's go. All right, Niski and Armut are currently trading for the time being. Bwipo joins the fray. Humanoid's got the Emperor's Divide. He's going to need to use it to buy time, and he does. Armut escapes with his life for now. What? Niski with the huge outplay. That was ridiculous damage. Where did Humanoid go? The one second he was there, the next he wasn't. It, Niski's like a magician or something. I didn't even understand how quickly he died. If we get a replay of that, I would love to see that in slow-mo. Super, super slow-mo. <laughs> like, I, I, need, I need to be able to process what just occurred on my screen. And I wonder if it was a combination of like Pantheon Q plus a, a full combo from Niski, just all landing at exactly the same time. My God, I mean, uh, uh, let's just watch and see what happens here, I suppose, because uh, Humanoid got a beautiful ultimate off and it, it seemed like the damage was going to be enough, but then Armut, of course, used it and then what happens? Oh, Bipo's five stack on the Q. There we go. Oh my, that Q did, what, 400, 500 damage from Bipo? It five stacks? Ridiculous. <laughs> my focus was so much on Niski diving in with the uh, uh, Vanguard's Edge ulti, and then Whippo just snipes Look, him through the It's Magician device. Niski, right? It's the sleight of hand. He just used his body instead of his hand to distract. And very crucially, maybe for the first time this game, you see how the Fnatic comp sort of wants to play, right? Yeah. Had they not uh, conceded as much earlier on, you would have been a lot happier. Fnatic are now in control of the gold. And Dragon's coming up in 30 seconds. You can see already both teams grouping around yeah, it. They did get a pretty sizable shutdown on Humanoid 2. I love the way Selfmade's playing. He knows he can't be seen. Well, now he's seen him. Kaiser, he wants in. Fantastic engage with the Magnus Storm. Hilly and Whipple is so, so low. That's a trade of support for now. 
Fnatic are able to retreat. The Rift Herald was dropped, and that will pick up a tower in favor of Fnatic. Recall coming out from Blipo. Here's the thing, though. Armut, he has his ultimate. He's level 11, and he TP'd into this fight. He wasn't even there when Kaiser went in for that one-for-one -one trade. And him and El Yoya, oh, man, are they going to be able to find Fnatic? Are Fnatic going to take the aggressive way in? I don't think they know they're even there, but they have to back away. Now, do Fnatic want to try and contest this at all? No, it's one dragon apiece thus far. They'll concede it. Oh. Fnatic start to back away. There's no ways they start. No, so there's already missing pinks for Mad Lions on Baron. So Fnatic are starting it up, but Mad Lions suspect they have a blue trinket spotted out, so that'll shut down that play instantly and also mean this mid tower is not long for this world. Right, Mad Lions will be able to use that Weaver's Wall. Cut off uh, a little bit of the support. It's not greatly placed. There's the engage from Hilly. He flashed in, managed to get the Zenith play. Humanoid buys time with the Empress Divine. Upset. Look at upset. Alone. He's on the back line trying to take down Kazi. He's got the damage, but he's stunned. Knocked up by the Cyclone. Manages to get back to Fnatic before Armor takes him out with that Cyclone of his own. This is going to be three kills going to Fnatic. But they did lose their tower in the fray. But can Fnatic actually turn to this Baron? I don't know. They lost their AD carry, but they've got uh, auto attackers on this team. Niski, Blipo going to deal a lot of damage to Baron, and they're going to go for this. Just in the blink of an eye, Fnatic able to jump on Mad Lines out of nowhere. I love that play. Upset, positioning, diving onto Kazi. He was zoned away because of everything Fnatic were doing just under the tower. And he managed to get back to his team, and unfortunately, Armored Cyclone was it's right It's the top mobility of and the snap and gauge of this team, right? Hillisang says, let's go in. So immediately, you have a TP and the man drop. Upset also goes flying into the back line. This gets a little bit wild as he tries to get that fight onto Karzi, and the rest of Mad Lions are there, try and finish him off. But then he's able to, to go invisible, buy some more time from the rest of Armut, taking pressure away from his teammates as they just continue to charge on forward and get more kills. Yeah, and just correcting myself, it was, of course, the Nimbus strike into the crushing blow from Armut that picked up the final kill. Fnatic now four kills in the lead, 3,000 gold in the lead. They will most likely lose this tower if uh, Humanoid sticks around long enough. He's going to be able to hammer this one down. We'll run out of minions for a moment or two, and Fnatic content to sit back. They've got themselves the advantage with an open map, I think is going to favor Fnatic, at least in the short term. Oh, for sure. And because they have Baron, like, that means inner turrets are going to be dropping, too. So all of a sudden, like, this game, it was close in terms of gold, but it felt like it was getting closer and closer to favoring the Mad Lions. But because of this Baron and just a really good team fight, Selfmate feels very confident, and he's going to have to back on out of that one. Cards doesn't even have to lose the flash. Uh, but, like, this, this is going to cut off the entire jungle from Mad Lions. It means that Selfmate gets more time to keep on scaling up, and... The more shirts they get, only the better here for Fnatic. And of course, just keep your eyes on the itemization as well as the kill deaths. I mean, Whippo on this Pantheon, 7, 2, and 4. Still even CS with Armut. If you keep your eyes on Upset, he's farming up a storm. He's been left alone so much because everyone else has been fighting, and despite some early ganks in his lane, then all the action just moved everywhere else. He's got himself that Phantom Dancer completed, and the Solar Flare from Hilly. Yeah, take that, Karzy. Wondering what there was uh, fishing for in there. I remember Selfmade committed his flash just a few moments ago. This Red Bull Baron power play, plus 2,300 gold. And Fnatic have now got complete control of the map as Niski and Selfmade can push this top yeah. lane. I mean, but again, it's just all the jungle camps going to Selfmade. Now level 13, so full burst ready to go on him. And working on a Lich Bane too. Mid lane tower going to fall very shortly as well. All the pressure going the way of Fnatic, and now the map is completely wide open. It becomes so much more challenging for Mad Lions to find the team fight that they want, the correct setup for it, as well as they gear up to try and defend their final remaining inner turret. What do you make of Niski's build? I want to ask that question in a moment or two. Is Humanoid? How's, how good's he feeling? Being pressured. Humanoid will have some support from Aloyoya. There's an engage from Fnatic on the top lane. Whippo will just about oh. get the kill before he's taken down in the 2v1. Now Fnatic are in some trouble as the Feather Storm is hold on for now. Kazi not under enough threat. They are able to take out Niski. And Fnatic will take the tower and back away. Wow, even in the, the three versus four right there from Mad Lions, they come ahead on the top side of the map. It was just a one for one trade down bot. Mad Lions will delay the remaining Baron buff. They lost all their remaining towers outside of their base, but not an inhibitor. Not an inhibitor yet. Baron will just wear off 50 seconds until Dragon. It may not take that long for the next fight the way this game has played out. Just 25 minutes in. We've got ourselves uh, 31 kills secured already. But I want to go back to uh, the fact that Niski's not elected to go for the Mythic just yet. What do you make of this? It seems to be working out, at least in terms of the skirmishes. But 
it's an odd one. Yeah, it is. He's, of course, just stacking a lot of these on hits here and felt like he, he needed that in terms of his itemization. But I, the big miss on top of, like, any sort of active you're going to get from this Mythics is the Mythic passive, whether it's, like, stacking Ability Haste, which, of course, uh, and, and Aurelia is going to love. So I'm, I'm very surprised to see this come through from him. We'll have to see if they can use it to finish. I like the way Selfmade's playing here. He might be able to catch Humanoid. I mean, I think he can blow any of the damage dealers up with one combo. His flash is still on cooldown. And Fnatic already inside the pit. They don't have the strongest vision uh, inside the red buff of Mad Lions, but Humanoid is the target. Selfmade is hunting. Oh, but the Very turret good. goes down. Selfmade's like, what are you doing, guys? Come on. And actually, the, the, the idea from Selfmade to be here, what jungler does this, right? Your team's doing dragon. You're like, I want to hunt the side lane. It's because, well, Fnatic have full control over the map, and Mad Lions would expect Selfmade to be bot side. So they're not contesting over the drake. They're saying, go side lane, Humanoid, scale up, get some gold. For Selfmade, he just wants to find any stragglers. Looking for a top. Oh, he's oh, got him. It's going to be the one. He goes golden. Thanks to Hourglass. First item purchase. Now Selfmade's in a little bit of trouble. Lost Chris will buy some time. And Seismic Shove was fantastic. Ended up getting surrounded by the enemy. And that is the risk you run when you apply this strategy. The rest of Fnatic were nowhere near. He was hunting and unfortunately became the hunted. Well, he just forgot about the Zonias, just like I did there. I was I was like, for sure El Yoya's down, but no, the rush of the Zonias, of course, pays off very nicely there for El Yoya. And now things slow down again. So Fnatic, a lot of that pressure will be gone. And again, the more time Mad Lions are given, the better for them. If they can make this game come down to a critical soul fight or a Baron fight, that's where they're going to thrive. All they need to do is make sure that their flanks are going to be under control because you know that Whippo's just going to be diving in from the sky. You can't really protect against that. What you can protect against is that uh, is that Evelyn. And they've done a good job of shutting down Selfmade on a lot of his attempts so far. Now the question is, the fact that Whippo is so fed with kills and got himself the two items completed, plus the fact that Upset has gone relatively unfocused, unnoticed, 0-1-6, got himself three items completed as Flame Horizon, Kazi. We've seen that one play where he used the ultimate into the back line. If they go into a straight up 5v5, you cannot underestimate the impact that Upset could have on that back line. That, that's very true, that's very true. Now, now the big benefit for Mad Lions is that they have the, the Emperor's Divide, right? They have the Featherstorm from Karzy Tooth. There's a lot of these great self-peel tools, and that's where I feel like for Bwipo and Niski and Hill saying their primary objective is to get those cooldowns out, whether it's, you know, a, a great Solar Flare from Hill saying that forces Karzy's hand to pop up into his ultimate, or Bwipo diving in and Humanoid then has to push him away with the Emperor's Divide. Opening uh, those school, uh, those skills up and giving self made away into the fight is so critical. But the crazy thing is, even when they look so good, there is still counters to them. Self made will buy some time, jumps on Humanoid, almost takes him out. The Vanguard's edge jumps forward. Now Kazi forced to use the ultimate himself. Niski's the first one to die, and the Magnet Storm is great from Kazi. Now Whippo's jumps in back, and that's upset. He's got himself one carry, turns his attention to Alioya, flashes over the wall. Emperor's Divide knocks him away for the time being. Self made around. Uh, here comes Self made with the re engage. He's blown up by the Sand Soldiers. Upset's going so low, and he's dropped as well. They died too quickly mad lions have won the fight and aced fanatic the team fight for mad lions is just too good great play it was so scrappy all over the place a million different things you had to track but mad lions tracked them so wonderfully humanoid and and the rest of the team able to survive throughout it they're going to pick up the baron and take a major lead in the game it is impossible to track each individual moment that is taking place here because it's on so many fronts but honestly i don't like the order of operations for fanatic having self-made go in first it doesn't even get a cooldown so niski then goes down and Kaiser, what an ulti out of him. The follow-up isn't great, but upset, he's zoned for a long time. The second he joins into the fight, it's good, but again, has to flash away from these abilities. The Emperor's fight catching him over the wall is just so brutal for him as he tries to deal with it. The flank on the other side doesn't work. Upset can't quite finish off any of these kills, so El Yoya finishes him off as well. It was just on slivers of HP, Mad Lions outplaying in the moment. The amount of patience and awareness from Humanoid to hold on to that Emperor's Divide until the very moment his life is at risk. Turns the entire game around. Upset unable to clean up the back line. Means Mad Lines, while we were in the replay, they were able to pick up the Baron buff. Now they are the team that's on the engage. They are the team that's even in gold with a team composition that we feel is better scaling. And we've seen that unless the team fight goes perfectly for Fnatic, Mad Lions have the tools to turn it around.
It feels like they can replicate it too. Now sort of taking the fight to Fnatic. Look at Fnatic's positioning on the map, setting up a potential flank here, but there's so many control wards they have to get through. There's no way they can dodge away from all of this vision. Now three members resetting while Selfmade goes all the way around. Selfmade might actually be able to dodge away from this vision. Niski will be seen, but here we go. All right, Hellasan gets a fantastic solo play. Upset jumps in with the killer instinct, but he's knocked back immediately. Upset stays alive just a few seconds longer. Has the GA available, will now be revived. Selfmade is on the flank. He needs to get in really quick because Upset's just about to go down. Kaiser wasn't able to find any more. But the Azir turn, he can't let him flank. Off. They can't get around it. Niski's able to shut down Humanoid, but this is such a long fight. Now all of a sudden, Armut, with those crushing blows of the crushing blows, is tearing apart Fnatic. Selfmade jumps in with the caress, and it ends up being a 4 4 3. Oh my god, the, the sand disc! The sun disc stops Selfmade's entire plan. He spent so much time trying to set up that flank. Fnatic engaged so early to try and keep Mad Lions in the area, but the turret from Humanoid completely shut down that play, and Mad Lions win yet again. It is ridiculous stuff. The third dragon will be picked up after Mad Lions were sieging the inhibitor turret. And you can see how long range engaged from Hellasang plus upset on Kaiser yeah. pan out, but there just wasn't enough support. I also feel like Killsang goes in really early, right? That means upset has to go through the GA. But then, of course, there's still... Oh, the turret goes up a little bit earlier, so Selfmade didn't quite realize that. Armut was also in the area. That's a big problem for him. And then Fnatic need to press forward, but then there's this turret they also have to deal with. They have to get through the thick front line of Armut as well. Just nothing they can do, and Selfmade doesn't have quite the damage with the extra shielding coming in from Kaiser. Are you not entertained? The most kills that we have had in a game this year was 47. And we are just shy of that. I feel confident we'll break that oh, record. Oh, for sure. During Ready Check yesterday, Ifya said it would it would be a bit sad if this game fizzled. And boy, oh boy, it has not fizzled. It has been brawl after brawl. Two and a half minutes to the next Baron, four minutes to the next Dragon. And Fnatic are posturing for an engage. Hillisang goes forward and starts to back away. That's the ultimate from Whippo. Armut commits the Cyclone as well. Looking for Selfmade and Niski to find targets and they can't just yet. Hellasen goes in oh, once no. more, but that's not enough. That may have been to, I don't know, stop Mad Lions. Fnatic are split now. I mean, to be fair, there, there's no objectives on the map here. So uh, there's just the exposed inhibitor and bottling the Mad Lions can try to play for. They have minions down there too, and 30 seconds on the death timers. Feels like that'll be the call coming through from the Mad Lions, but Fnatic really trying to force these engagements, and I think you need to try and catch Mad Lions in a tighter corridor there, in a place where they have less room to maneuver. You can sort of choke them down with Whippo flying in the solo flare too. I think Fnatic tried that, maybe the order of engage. Uh, around I mean, that Cooper. was just the mid lane, man. I, I, there's a lot of space for Mad Lions to work with. The question that I would have asked in any other game was why did they engage there? I'm not gonna pose that to you because it's not fair. I've asked that on nearly every single fight thus far. 25 kills to 21, and that will be the bottom inhibitor secured. So this will be now even more map control and pressure on Fnatic's side. They have to deal with the supers in the bottom lane. They've got three minutes until the soul is available for Mad Lions to secure. Yeah, Selfmade should hit level 16. Not quite off that wave, but off of his next camp, he'll have that. And that's a really big spike in terms of damage with that ultimate him so much uh, more kill threat on a lot of these champions, but I don't know if he has kill threat really on anyone when you factor in the, the all, all the self-peel tools and the raw tankiness in terms of like Azonia's as well. He doesn't have a lot of great targets, and that is again why he needs other players on the team to do the dirty work of getting rid of those big spells. And uh, it's, it's gonna have to be a little bit more clean in this next fight, a little bit more coordinated. The next few minutes, Fnatic have to be talking to each other about these things. Selfmade needs to tell his team, I, you guys have to do this for me, otherwise it becomes so much harder for me to fight. Well, it has been so difficult already, and for Upset, he invested a lot to complete that Guardian Angel before the previous inhibitor fight. It is not available, it's 25% of the cooldown available for the next few minutes, and just looking at available summoner spells, flashes for everybody on the Mad Lions. Hourglass available for Alyoria as well as Humanoid. So the window of opportunity, the ability to punish there is going to get even more nuanced, even more difficult for Fnatic. On the bright side, there's a Baron in 20 and there's a Mountain in 140. So you have some uh, ideas of where Mad Lions are going to prioritize. Yeah, I mean, Mad Lions can just go to this Baron very quickly. They get in the push in mid. You can already see Selfmade is setting up, trying to find a flank angle. He's going to try to enter the fight from the north end. And the good news is there's no control words to spot that out unless you were to try and get all the way to the mid lane, in which case he would be speed. 
Ooh, Grippo trying to throw out those spears from the side. Seismic shove just. He's just going to wait there. I love okay, it. Okay, what would the sort of ideal engage scenario from Fnatic be in your eyes right now? Uh, I mean, I think it has to be Hillisang finding uh, Karzi or Humanoid. Uh, likely trying to burn Karzi's ultimate coming out. The, the difficulty is Karzi could just decide to use the cleanse instead. He has all, so many tools to work with. But again, Selfmade sitting in the brush has to dodge away from the Red Sweeper. He can use the brush, try and close the gap, play off of the vision a little bit more, and the Baron's going down. We'll close on the bottom lane. Where is the pressure? Baron's down to 3,000. Selfmade steps forward. Fnatic, they stand close by, but absolutely nothing happens. A lot of damage on the Kazi, and the Solar Flare comes down, but Selfmade is dead. He's dropped where he stands. Popo finally arrives to the fight, but the Emperor's Divide sends Fnatic backwards. Upset, and Hillisang against the world. The last man standing is the newest man to Fnatic, and Upset starts. They're TP in the base. Away. They're trying to end the game, Trevor. They've got the Baron. They've got the ability to do it. Upset will try to take down Al Yoya, and he should be able to just about do it. That's it, Mad Lions on the Nexus. They survive the onslaught that Fnatic throw and Mad Lions take down Fnatic. Mad Lions showing up in a big way in those team fights. There's the critical one inside of the top side. Jungle and right there completely destroyed Fnatic. Didn't even look like they stood a chance. Kersey bowing down to the rest of his teammates. Thanks for the carry, guys. I'm just an AD carry. What can I do? Mad Lions bring back the win celebration for the first time taking out Fnatic in Match of the Week. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. 50 kills across 35 minutes. And I honestly think around 30 of them were before the 20, 22, 23 minute mark. Fnatic just threw themselves at Mad Lions relentlessly. Yeah, it, I mean, it, was, it, was, it, was, it felt like sloppy play for a lot of the time coming out from Fnatic, especially in moments where they didn't have the advantage or they were still waiting to get the proper items and build into it. It, it was just all steam ahead and uh, they, they got punished for it. The question I ask myself is like, if this is limit, if this was intentional, if this was by, by design, why, first of all? And also, the number of times that Mad Lions were able to outplay was really exciting to see. I think Kedril used a term earlier today where he said that Fnatic, they like to group and fight as five. Mad like to do that individually, like in their solo position. This game and felt like the complete it reverse. Was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> it's wild. Kia Player of the Game nominees at LEC on Twitter, Armut, Humanoid, and Kaiser. Um, crazy stuff. I hope you enjoyed Match of the Week. I mean, I certainly did. But I, the I sun don't disc know what to that make completely stopped Selfmade's Twice. Flank, That was just the most. That's so frustrating because Selfmade spent oh. so much time. He's just ah, why? Also remember that that was the last pick, Evelyn, that put Pantheon mm. into the top lane, right? So Fnatic opted into that strategy, and unfortunately it didn't work out. But what a game! We'll soon hear from Kaiser before Kazi joins us in the post-game lobby. Don't go anywhere. Don't you dare! Yes, what a game! <laughs> Systems are overloading. We can't risk another game. We need to take a break and regroup. We're starting to lose our mind. Captain, we cannot go back to Elo Helm. Last time it took us months to get out of it. Initiate break protocol. Hurry up! Uh, yes! Uh, yes! Yes! I did it! I, we did it! We did it! Even the biggest champ needs a break.
Welcome back to the LEC for the final interview of this week too. What a match of the week it was. And Kaiser, I'm very happy to have you for the very first interview. Uh, for your very first interview, actually, in 2021. How was this game for you? It was very entertaining to watch on our side. I want to know how about you. I mean, I think this was like the by far the most stressful game I've played this season. Uh, so, I mean, it was like my heart is still racing, actually. Like, I know that uh, Fnatic is a really tough opponent, so I expected this kind of game for sure. Like a lot of kills and a lot of fighting and a lot of back and forth. But uh, this was like a one of a kind game for sure. It was so insane. I mean, it's so exciting to watch. And uh, I, I, I want to know more because lo looking at your comp, I mean, you had a good scaling comp. You just had to wait, I guess, for time to play in your favor. With all the skirmishes you had, all the fights, how were you able to stay on top and actually beat Fnatic in the end? Um, I mean, Azir got a lot of kills early game. I think they played a bit too aggressive on the bot side. So like uh, once, once like the Azir got like three kills or something uh, from TPing behind them on, on bot lane, uh, the game felt kind of uh, like not uh, easy, but like uh, we had like a better shot at go getting through the early game, right? Because uh, Azir was already so far ahead of his uh, opposition. We made some mistakes in the mid game, like we got caught a lot. But uh, I mean, that's kind of bound to happen if they have like Pantheon, old uh, Evelyn, of course, uh, is really hard to play against, uh, especially self mates, of course. Uh, so we had some slip ups, but uh, we, we never really doubted our late game, that's for sure. I want to know more about these uh, slip ups, actually, because you felt really in control. Fnatic didn't stop uh, didn't stop fighting you at any point so and they were leading the game actually in terms of gold before you took the baron so uh, i'm just wondering how, how okay. did you make everything happen and what were those mistakes that you were mentioning that you could have avoided I mean, I think we underestimated their ability to just go on side lane with, like, for example, Pantheon or Evelyn. Like, they, they, we, we are basically pressured on every side because we don't see, like, w once we don't see Pantheon or once we don't see Evelyn, they can be everywhere, kind of. And they did a really good job at, like, avoiding vision. Uh, so we were always, like, really scared and we tried to make plays when we didn't really need to. Like, for example, we went a few times on Irelia and then they just Pantheon ulted, yeah. Evelyn came in. And, of course, for example, Kazi was really scared of walking into our jungle because self could be there and just one shot him, so we couldn't really follow up that easily. So I think we should play, maybe play it a bit more uh, passively and uh, just let ourselves uh, scale into the game. Uh, but it worked out in the end. How was the communication going during the game with all this craziness going around? It was actually not that chaotic. I think we, like, uh, after <laughs> dying a few times on sideline, we, we kind of calmed down a bit. We, we tried to uh, slow down the game. We just tried to play macro. Like, we we went S5, basically, like because that's how you kind of have to play the game against Evelyn at, uh, like, after mid-game. Uh, so we just tried to stay calm. Uh, of course, like, in fights and after fights, we were, like, really hyped. So everyone was screaming and, like, saying, holy shit, go, go Baron and stuff like this. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it was really cha chaotic after some time. Yeah, chaotic indeed, but you got the win in the end, and you also got player of the game here, Kaiser. So oh. explain to me this performance yes. you had on Rel, this champion that we don't <laughs> often see in the LDC, actually. And I think this champion is actually really underrated. Uh, I feel like a lot of people just don't understand her strengths maybe and like maybe go a bit too aggressive because her, her melee form or like her uh, out of horse form is like really mm -hmm. uh, easy to punish so maybe a lot of people just think she's bad because she like when you go in at the r r wrong time then you just get punished uh, really easily she's kind of like uh, alisa or leona in a way uh, but uh, i'm really happy that uh, right make, made such a fun champion because like this, this champion is also like really strong right now uh, just in general into tank matchups and since en enchanters are not really meta right now she can be like blind picked even or like uh, yeah, played into like every tank i guess so uh yeah that's really good i agree with you the toolkit is super strong <coughs> it's super effective in team fights and you had an amazing performance here kaiser so congrats on winning the match of the week before i let you go i have one question and i, I tweeted about this yesterday <coughs> where are the mad lion celebrations in 2021 what did you stop doing this well, uh, we didn't really come up with with like any really like funny stuff, but I think maybe once like we start uh, getting more comfortable in the season, I guess maybe we we'll start doing them again. Uh, but right now we didn't have really any anything planned, so I'm really sad about it as well. But uh, maybe they come back in the future.
All right, well, thanks for answering this because I know all the fans were wondering about this and game first, creativity for the celebrations after. Kaiser, thank you so much for the interview and good luck next week in the LEC. Thank you. You're welcome and that's all for us on this side of Europe, but stay tuned for the post-game lobby in a few minutes with Kaiser. Carzy, Carzy, yes.